Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for the brief stop, but here we are back with our second matchup of the day. Moving into the next round, it's Joker Gaming versus Blood, Bath, and Beyond. On the left-hand side, Joker Gaming will be taking first pick, first ban. They're going to remove Loki, not letting that go through. Still very strong. Osiris taken away. He did get a few nerfs. Chins comes out roughly one minute later, and his attack speed was reduced by 0.07 attacks per second at max level. That said, it's not a very big nerf in terms of attack speed, and once you eventually get Chins... He's still the same as Cyrus, and he still kind of cuts you to ribbons. So he's not going to be available. Geb, banned out, Bloodbath, and Beyond. Probably want to get rid of Athena here, but they'll be giving up Nuwa. I like the Geb pick, honestly. Or, or the Geb ban, rather. I think Geb is just a powerful character that not only is he powerful in and of himself with an AoE stun that does percent damage, along with the rest of his kit... But he makes powerful characters more powerful. The Aphrodite ban is going to come out. That's sort of what Geb does as well, is just protect a certain target. So when you have a Freya or a Habwa and you connect a Nuwa or a Geb to them, they're just indestructible. Athena first pick, and there's that Nuwa that you mentioned. Master Fischio going to go ahead and lock in Nuwa the first time we see this character in a competitive environment. Right, so Nuwa has... She fits the same uh, paradigm as Alklong as a damage mage, where your goal isn't to kill any particular target. You hit who you can and do as much damage as possible, right? Like, Spirit's Tempest is an ability that requires proper setup, and Alklong will be hovered on for Joker Gaming. So you just kind of take the hit that you can get. But, Nuwa does it differently in that she just ults the entire team, and if you're building raw damage, this ult can hit very hard, upwards of 600. 100 damage to the entire team essentially for free it can be mitigated by stuff like shell you could heal it up with raw heal but it's still a lot of damage and then the new wild player has to rely on the rest of the kit just to get stuff done to close out the fight and do a lot of damage similar to poseidon where you unleash your kraken and you're like all right that's half my job now i need to use the rest of my kit to make something happen alquan and freya locked in for joker gaming chalk the final pick for bloodbath and beyond the Aquan Freya combo has become one of the more celebrated combinations recently. Uh, really no sense in saying who originated it since it's a very basic and tried and true method. But yeah. the banish into Spirit's Tempest is incredible setup. It's virtually inescapable and it secures an ultimate who will hit you for four digits. So Alcon for a, a very powerful combination coming out here for jo for Joker Gaming, and they're going to go ahead and ban out Hercules, a good pick. I wanted to see a support ban from Joker Gaming, and I think that is a support ban. Yeah, I mean, so they're just here. Here's the problem, and it's an advantage and disadvantage with the current two support meta. Geb and Athena are the two best supports. So when you take Athena and ban out Geb, you're like, all right, we've got the best support. And then if you want to continue to ban out supports, you just kind of throw bans at your opponents and hope you hit them a little bit like Battleship. So maybe Hercules was a character that Bloodbath and Beyond wanted to play, but honestly, I would have liked to see a Mercury ban instead. He's so strong right now, he could play multiple roles. Once again, this could be an ADC Mercury. In fact, it probably will be an ADC Mercury with a Sir Cat in the jungle. Yanis for Joker Gaming, probably in the solo lane, and Rob in the duo lane. Yeah, that Hunter Mercury has become so incredibly prevalent thanks to Cognitive Red's very own Snoopy. Uh, they won the North American regional land, took home $25,000, and one of the most decisive matches was played by Snoopy on that Mercury in lieu of the well, Hunter. Hold on, so. hold on just one second. I thought, so I'm just getting word from our admins. New Law is auto banned today. So huh. we will be having to go into a remake. For Bloodbath and Beyond, they could not pick this character. It's not available for play. We'll be back after a brief break. Welcome back, folks. A little bit of a technical difficulty delay, but we're back into the match. Teams are relatively the same. The only difference is that Nuwa that is auto-banned has been replaced by an Agni. So we're going to see the same lineups coming out from Joker Gaming and Bloodbath and Beyond. Nothing really to be seen there. Just a different mid laner. 
in the blue trunks, Joker Gaming will consist of CCOFTW on your Hunter Rama, supported by McSherbert on Athena in the middle lane, Al Kwong played by Texas King, Solin Yanis from Peroth, and in the jungle, Dragon on Freya. Making a bloodbath and beyond is going to be chaos in the middle lane on that Agni with his team grouping up just to protect the, the warding of the support. Master Fisho, a name we've seen around, is going to be playing on that shock, looking like he's heading uh, into the solo lane. While well, Narian plays that, eight, that celebrated ADC Mercury these days, supported by Jelly. And El Chapu, interesting addition as a player, going to be playing in the jungle. Yeah, El Chapo on that jungle circuit. Circuit's a very strong character uh, when played by certain players, but really requires a high level of mechanical expertise. Sort of similar to Yanis, where people sort of looked at him and were like, oh, he's bad, his abilities are unreliable. Well, not really. They're just difficult. You have to get the character right. But Master Fusho is going to reset a Harpies on the right-hand side. Does have a hog available, able to get both of them, takes a lot of damage for it. But as a shock, I don't think that's too heavy of a cost to pay. Because it sets solo lane ahead and it sets mid lane ahead. Chaos is going to have a very easy time up against Texas King. Yeah, I think that was a great decision coming out from Master for show, and he's going to be already above 50% HP, so that's going to be a win for him. Mid lane red is also pushing up against the tower. But dual lane's just a little bit different. Ta coming out on Tenarian, they're really trying to pick him off early before Merc can do any damage, Kret, which, as I said before, is what you do against a Hunter you're afraid of getting ahead, but against a Mercury, I think it's all about the control game. Yeah, you just have to keep him down all game long, but it's a nice jump in onto CCOFTW. Narian trying to get clear, has to be careful, doesn't want to take too much Archer damage, dings that level 3. That's going to be a nice taunt. Narian could be in a lot of trouble. Finds a special delivery out. And sort of the problem is, while you can keep him down, he's got a 7% chance to crit you, and that can change the dynamic of the lane instantly. Chaos playing very aggressive in the middle lane, dashing forward, still at level 4. Texas King only just hitting level 3, and that is just how powerful the difference between the mid camps are. Yeah, that level difference is going to matter for a while, especially the change of character that Agni goes through once he hits level 5. Agni clears very unsafely using a dash and uses all of his tools at level 4 and then as soon as he hits level 5 those meteors become available to him. Cretin. Those are an incredible tool to add to his arsenal and will help him safely clear like no other character. Exactly, he can clear very safely he wants, he can save them for poke, but in the duel lane CCOFTW is going to a special route. A nice two-man taunt Major Look comes out, but the whole wave is waveable. Jelly is getting aggressive with those other attacks. Make sure we're lit up by the uh, no longer Roman range. They're now Invader Archers. <laughs> wow, that was a throwback. And uh, Bloodbath and Beyond is doing very well in this duo lane, which is a bad sign for Joker Gaming. That it is. This time around, Freya seems to be online with her enemy jungler, so we should see an exciting Freya match this time around. 2400 gold on him, 2400 gold on El Chapu. So it's going to be nice and even. Both characters heading towards their back camp. They're working completely in sync and will probably wind up in the same lane for their first initial gank. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here, but mid camp comes up in 20 seconds. El Chapo does have a stealth. If he chooses to use it, Dragon is going to take a bit of damage from that Deathbane dash, but turns it right around with the Pulse already, and now stunned out, could be in trouble. Spirit Tempest comes through, avoided by both jumps, but the dash was not on its mark. Texas King has no mana, will be forced to back away, and just too many resources used from Joker Gaming there. They're not going to be able to contest either set of mid camps because they use too much getting out. Now Dragon on the left hand side is in a lot of trouble as Jelly gets aggressive. He actually ran out of mana there, was not able to close the kill with Intoxicate, but El Chapo will be able to find Texas King. Texas King goes ahead and gives up that first blood to the Circuit. This is the character we were talking about that is very, it, it all depends on the driver, not necessarily the innate mechanics of the character. And right Oh, now, right hand side though. Perroth gets taken down by a level 7 dive from Mass for Show. 
gets out with about 70 health remaining. Good pick for Master Michelle. So, thus far, as both mid cams go into the same team, uh, Master Michelle seems to just be making incredibly aggressive decisions and plays and getting away with it. He's going to go ahead and back at level 7. His enemy solo laner, still level 5. Yeah, and you know, last game we saw a very strong chalk play coming out with that Stone of Gaia, a more defensive build. This time, it's the Death Soul into combat boots, which will become Warrior Tabi. Much more aggressive, also played at a very high level. I mean, Diving Towers at level 7 definitely means you know what you're doing on the character. And it's just so interesting how wildly different this character can play depending on how you build him. I, there aren't many other characters that vary so much based simply on build. Yeah, Chalk can really change roles drastically. Last game we saw the unkillable Chalk with an Emerald Talisman into Stone of Gaia, and this time around we're seeing straight penetration boots coming out of the gates, along with the Death Toll. Really just looking for, for a lot of damage, you know, and you can even go more so. We see Heartseeker show up on, on Chalk sometimes, so very many different varying levels of, of Chalkitude. Yeah, and Chalk is actually one of the characters that used to build Shin Size. Didn't really need them. They were just really good on him because they were really good in general. Uh, but hold on in the middle lane. El Chapo is going to jump onto Texas King. Nice damage coming out. And the poison will come through. El Chapo able to backstep out of the ultimate. But in the left-hand lane, McSherbert is going to be in trouble. Flip comes up, not gonna really do much. McSherbert over there in the uh, left-hand lane getting pressed on. They're gonna dive the tower for this Kret Jelly, looking like he wants to do it. Intoxicate, not enough, but over the wall comes a Sir Kent, and a zigzag for the kill is gonna go to the jungler. Dragon trying to stop something. Bad communication on the knockup into the dash, and Dragon's gonna clean that up for the Valkyrie's discretion. Yeah, that's the power of that Valkyrie's Aggression Ultimate. It's so easy to confirm the damage. You're completely safe while you do it. It does a ton. CCOFTW will be forced back to base, but will not die. Four players from Joker Gaming are in the area. I don't think there's too much they can do. And one thing I do want to mention is Texas King is going into the uh, the Book of Thoth Rush. Now, he didn't start with the Soul Reliquary, he started with a Tiny Trinket, but because of the way he's building, he's not going to have boots for quite some time. And as a result, rotations coming out from Chaos are much more powerful than they would have been otherwise because the follow from Texas King is absolutely abysmal. I mean, the base movement speed of Valkong is very low, Slither does not last very long, and he's not going to have boots for a long time. That movement speed on mages is so incredibly important, Cred. A lot of times in the middle lane, you really don't see these rushes. It's just not as effective. We're going to see if the the trade-off, of course, to the movement speed is an incredible amount of damage. Yeah. So if Texas King can stay at two deaths right now and really farm up and buy this Book of Thoth, then it will, might prove to be a good investment. We'll have to see. It's all in the play style. Sonic Boom under tower on the left-hand side. Narin is looking to dodge those ultimates, and he's just dove too far. Make sure it. it's going to pop out. Narian's gonna get taken down. No way out. One for the kill, but Rom Ultimate going to uh, keep the Hindu Hunter alive. One thing I do want to mention about the Book of Thoth on Al Kwong, the stacks give you 60 magical power total. So it's probably worth trying to stack that up early, but hold on, Dragon in the jungle in a lot of trouble. Stuck out, gets hit by one match of Meteors up in the air before the second. And now she looks like she's going to get away, but there's the ultimate from the circuit. That's a lot of damage once again, splitting the uprights with that out Kwong. Oh, Dragon going to take the hit, and Chaos gets the kill. Bounce up on the out Kwong, and Texas King down for the count as well. Jelly. Ooh, but here comes McSherbet. Finds a nice tie. El Chapo could be in trouble. Needs to try and stay alive. Deathbane, not quite going to find the hit that he wanted. Very difficult to use move just because of how it's not erratic, it's predictable, but it feels erratic because of the way the character moves and it's a strange fashion that's not really anything we're used to. So there's a lot of adjustment take it, uh, it takes to play this character, but El Chapo is doing well so far and going into Jodan's is going to do very well for him. One of the biggest advantages of Jodan's Wrath 
is actually the build path. Rank 2 of this item offers, I believe, 30 physical power and 50 or 10 penetration, which is really, really good for about 1600 gold. Right hand lane, though, Peroth in trouble. Janice stuck out, gets not silenced. He's gonna walk out through the portal, but there's enough follow up to get him away with the oh. ultimate. But Chaos Dot, your left tower. Is That's the power attack. of Agni burning across the map. Ah, uh, but here comes Dragon. He wants to turn something around. Awkwardly runs out of portals and now is in a horrible position. Doesn't have the Valk or he does have the Valkyrie discretion. No DOT this time. But. A nice jump in from El Chapo finds a kill. Dive on the left hand side. Spirit Snatches comes through. Will find Naren. He's in a tough spot. Able to dash away just in time. Jelly will stun out the dash from Mick Sherbet. And that's going to be the Deathbane Poison once again. Along with that true damage from the ultimate. And now, this is a gold fury. It's also not going to be a blue buff. Naren wanted it. Those uh, ADC reflexes kicking in. But gold fury <laughs> is the better call. It's the much better call, Kret. And looking at what Bloodbath and Beyond is doing, really, they're just, they're just punishing Joker Gaming's lack of speed. What goes yeah. on is somebody gets caught out and they and they die to about three members of the red team, and then Joker Gaming responds one by one. And Bloodbath and Beyond winds up leaving these engagements rather low because they're extended engagements, but the out they just outnumber the enemy team in all of these team fights thus far 10 minutes in folks we're looking at a 6400 gold lead right now on the right hand side master for show is just going to barely survive an attack from Peroth, able to get out of that one by the skin of his teeth Peroth will have some time to hit on this tower but on his way is el chapo spotted out on a ward Peroth does have the ultimate up if need be and he is just going to use that CC immunity, get to the wall, ult out. Didn't quite need that Defender of Olympus. And, and that's one of the biggest advantages of Yenis. You get ganked, and you're just like, alright, I'm CC immune, I can move. And I can travel <laughs> through walls that no other character can travel through. Yeah, that's, the, that's really the key right there. We used to talk about Agni being the safest mage by far. Because he had a dash that was largely crowd control immune. The moment, Dragon getting pincered. But a good lift is going to help her get out of there. Jelly's not going to land a stun. And that's going to take Narian completely out of the situation as well. Coming up behind CCO, though, on this on this ROM, going to opt instead for the defensive move. Going to go in front and just kill stuff while Chaos kills her off in the right-hand lane. Oh, CCO is going to be in a bit of trouble. Sonic Boom, too short. Narian can't possibly die to this ROM ultimate. So he's going to be able to follow up. Big dive on the right-hand side. Dragons Again. in the base. Oh, special delivery. CCO taken down. Three players died on the right hand side. 4 0. It's going to be the 12 minute fire giant. Narian can't rotate to this, but there should be enough tankiness and enough damage to take this down. Chaos uses his last bomb. El Chapu is going to be a big factor here. He has to do as much damage as possible. But Freya comes in with Valkyrie's discretion onto the assassin. Good targeting. Might not be able to get the kill. But it doesn't matter. Fire Giant will go the way of Bloodbath and Beyond. And they're going to clean this up right quick. El Chapo finds the kill. Narin finds the left lane tower. Yanis ult comes through. Doesn't find a hit. And now Bloodbath and Beyond. It looks like they're going to win this game. <laughs> Bloodbath and Beyond definitely in the driver's seat at the moment. El Chapo trying to make up for his previous mistakes in the competitive scene by just playing lights out sometimes fantastic play can just outweigh all the other mistakes right now narian trying to do so as well despite i mean he hasn't made many mistakes but that one's going to be one cco for the win takes the kill right there does lose the second tier tower though so that's an entire lane gone for joker gaming all that remains is the phoenix and so the question is giving up a I don't really want to say fed Mercury. He was probably worth a fair amount of gold, but he's not fed. Lost his fire giant, but got a tower. And when Narian committed to the tower there, there was probably no chance of him getting out. That's why he attempted to kill CCO FTW. That said, I'm not sure going for the tower and giving up his life was really worthwhile. I'm also not sure it really matters. It, it, it could be a mistake, but 
it's probably not going to be the kind of mistake that gives your gaming even the opportunity to hold off the push from Bloodbath Beyond. Dragon's going to be in a lot of trouble. Dragon is dead. And now it's going to be a dive under tower. Nice two-man knockup. That's the power of Bacchus. His intoxicate is available. Will come down. McSherbet needs to find a way out, but dies to an auto attack from the mage. And now the mid tower is going to fall. Mid tower will fall. There's four members with the fire giant buff. Master for show is tanking it, although his HP bar wouldn't show it. That's the power of shot, ladies and gentlemen. Perroth's going to get madness, but he's going to use some CC muni to get out of there, no problem. And the four members of Bloodbath and Beyond are going to meet up with their Mercury, and they're going to shade over to Siege, this right left-hand Phoenix. Now, this is the most important Phoenix to Siege because it's the furthest from the Fire Giant, which means you have to put pressure on this lane, but you can't really afford to. El Chapo's very low. We'll need to jump away trying to juke that ROM. But, unfortunately, jukes are exactly what Sir Cat does. Sonic Boom comes through, finds two, and that is absolute destruction. That said, enough damage came out from Joker Gaming that it likely will not mean their Phoenix is dead. McSherbet will fall, though. Fire Giant regen, perhaps? Narian? Goes under tower, takes a hit, Dragon is back. And... Well, Beyond still want this one cred. Dragon's gonna play aggressive because he realizes that they might pay for it. Master Fisho can tank this. El Chapu doesn't realize that Master Fisho has left. He's gonna take two shots of the Phoenix and a basic attack from Earth. That's gonna secure his death. Master Fisho should have stayed underneath that Phoenix to continue tanking it. They're gonna get the Phoenix nonetheless. El Chapo, everyone needs a death on this team, I guess they're saying. Well, Chaos and Jelly don't have one either, so. Just They've got work to do. <laughs> They've got a lot of work to do. Right now, all the deaths are on... Well, you know what? It was sharing. Narian didn't want to have all the deaths, so El Chapo uh, helped him out. But... <laughs> yeah, so... I... Honestly, I think El Chapo's dive was a good idea. It might have been miscommunicated, but as a result right. of the dive, because he did end up getting one of the kills, and Peroth peeled off to try and clean up and did clean up, the Phoenix did go down to Bloodbath and Beyond, and that's fine. Like, you can give up a kill, even a 1,000 gold kill, if El Chapo was worth that much. And he was probably worth a lot, considering he was 9-0-5 before he got taken down. Because you got the most important Phoenix, and for the next three minutes, there's going to be fire minions pressuring the long lane, the far lane from the gi fire giant. And for the rest of the game, that Phoenix will only respawn doing half health and half damage, which is incredibly important. Bloodbath Beyond, at the 16-minute mark, have perfectly set themselves up to win this game. I mean, as you highlighted before, Cred, the, it's the furthest Phoenix from the Fire Giant, so... It, it's a good thing that, that they got that one down that far. And, you know, you take a look at Joker Gaming, you look at their items or look at their deaths, which is about to happen. McSherbert getting madness and ultimated. She is the tank, but she's only level 11. McSherbert going to be taking down El Chapu with the kill. The CC coming out from the Sonic Bow. That's going to throw the dragon out of the wrong way. Texas King dies. Oh, the right portal. after he unleashes the dragon, but a great portal or, or a bad portal coming out from Janus right before his own death and this pain train just keeps on going Cret. right down the middle lane bloodbath and beyond wants to siege they might even look for a win depending on how aggressive they want to play this great use of shell there that's going to be the most damage freya can put out to the entire team so they're going to use shell to mitigate that rom can't do enough damage and freya with her ultimate down can't do enough damage to stop this phoenix push so bloodbath and beyond use their shell Take the Phoenix, and with two Phoenixes down at the 17 minute mark, Joker Gaming are going to throw in the towel. They know when they're over, and we're going to be moving on to our next match in just a few minutes. But first, let's talk about this one. You know, I think a large part of this problem for uh, for the blue team Joker Gaming right here was the lack of, of actives, Cret. When you're behind, I know you want to fill your items, you want to get on the same plane as the enemy team, but... A, a distinct lack of shell, distinct lack of Aegis, heavenly agility, a lot of tools. That's exactly what active items are. They're tools. And yet we only see a single beads three and everything else beads rank two. Yeah, I mean, when you're behind, you have to rely on good engagements. Knowing where your opponents are, that's not necessarily map vision. That's the easy way, but you know, you can kind of extrapolate based on where people are moving, calls, etc., etc. And you have to rely on outplay. Outplay often comes from the active slots, 
speeds, sprint, etc. Sometimes it comes from not going for actives and just putting all of your gold into items. So maybe a good Spirit's Tempest on an Ao Kuang that's, say, 900 gold further ahead than if he had actives. But Joker Gaming, they just couldn't make it happen. We're going to be moving on to our next round match, Snipe versus Rectangle Gaming, coming up next.